today when I'm doing this, it's not because I'm trying to say who's good or who's bad. I'm just saying that this needs to be fixed. In a country like India, we have a national identification card without which we cannot vote. When we come into this country, we have a retina scan, we have fingerprints, everything, when we are entering into, the, into this country through a border. How is that a vote, which is the single most important thing any person can do, is, is actually being cast without an ID, without any, any kind of oversight, and you know those ballots getting duplicated without an oversight, and all of this fraud that was happening, it was heartbreaking. So that's why I decided to put myself here. Another thing that um, I noticed is that um, there were democratic challengers there. I don't even call them challengers. They were agitators. They were only there with one purpose. When GOP people or nonpartisan people signed up, we were only trying to ensure that there was integrity. Whereas when de Democratic challengers signed up, their only purpose there was to intimidate the GOP people and get them out. So that was what was happening on the, th on, on the fourth when I got on the floor. I didn't have my GOP tag on, so automatically I was assumed to be a Democrat. And uh, I have seen some women who c came to me and I said, Let that, let get, let's get these MFs out. And when I saw that she was targeting white male Republicans, accusing them of something like your mask slipped, you were not six feet away, so you need to go out, and you know your phone was out, and they were really intimidating all these white people. And I put myself out there, tried to help them, saying, why are you getting them in trouble? And they said, why are you taking their side? Then I, then I showed my GOP tag, and then she said to me that, I am on the wrong side because I had a GOP tag on. When I got the nonpartisan tag at the counting board, they, the poll workers were very respectful because of my nonpartisan tag. But when I had the GOP tag, the first thing they said is six feet. You know the rule or you will be sent out. And I'm like, when I had the nonpartisan tag, not, a lot of rules didn't apply to me. So that just told me that, you know, those poll workers, the Democratic challengers, ACLU, and so many other people that were there, they, their only job there was to block the GOP challengers from doing their job. And when I was with the, with the nonpartisan tag and talking to Democratic challengers, most of them didn't even know what to challenge in a ballot. When I asked them a question, when I was asking supervisor a question, those, were, they, those people were literally confused because they didn't even know what I was asking. And then when I asked one lady, uh, where did you get trained? She said, trained for what? because they didn't know what they were there for. Their only job I could tell there was to block the GOP people from challenging or intimidate them and get them out. We even had the printed paper with us, and when we would show it to the supervisor, he'd say, we are enforcing the rules that we were given. That's the rule your team that sent you gave you. We don't have to abide by it because that does not apply to us. And we have to keep low profile, you have to understand, if we don't want to be kicked out, if we don't want to. Be, I, I may not be because I'm brown, but uh, all I'm saying is, but that, that was my trump card that I used all day. Uh, but then uh, the thing is, that's not a privilege for a white person. So white people, I could see, were not even daring to ask a question because if they were even a little bit louder, they would say, you're disturbing them, so they need to get out. And you have to understand the table, the poll workers were ganging up with Democrats. They were all in on the same team and the only people that are being isolated are the Republican, white male Republicans. So that, that yeah, that's Please. racism. If people ask me, was I ever treated uh, unfairly? I would say, rarely. Come to India, you will know what racism is. But here, no, I've been treated with a lot of respect. Now I see white people are being treated as, you know, so much worse than, you know, I was ever treated. Representative C.A. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, please indulge me. As a woman from the city of Detroit, a woman who has lived, I'm talking about me now, who has lived in the city of Detroit all of my 62 years, and having spoken with many, and by the way, thank you, uh, having spoken with many people who worked the TCF or TFC. TCF. All right, let's uh, let Representative Johnson continue. Um, and, and please get to your question, Representative. I will, I will. 
So my question really to you, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to repeat it again. These people, our guests are sharing information, just sharing and sharing and speaking and speaking. No one is under oath. There are, the world is watching us right now. And the world is watching right now. And there are one person after another who's testifying or who's making allegations because that's exactly what they are. Allegations of, of wrongdoing in the city of Detroit. I wonder, and I'm gonna ask you the question, did you see any cameras at the TCF Center? No. All right, so. And Representative, I just wanna remind you, I, I think it was the purpose of today's hearing to hear from people across Michigan who witnessed things at the TCF Center. That's why we're it, here. Well, you know, so, here, so, here, and well, I'm not going to argue with you about that. Here, so okay, so I they're here, but they're taking so much time, and I see no Detroiters. There is one Detroiter. It, stop that. Please continue, Representative. And, and there is one Detroiter, but I have many emails. Since there is no one who you have in this room to represent Detroiters, except a couple of us in this room. I have emails from Detroiters. We've taken, what, two hours? What's your, did you have a question? I, I'm willing, uh, please stop yelling, we people in the audience, let me handle this. Um, representative, listen, we've had hearings in the past, as you know, we'll have more hearings. Today, we've invited Mr. Giuliani, and Mr. Giuliani has brought forward witnesses uh, that, that he uh, as a, uh, says have firsthand knowledge of fraud. That's what we are doing today. And if, if we want hearings, to find out if... Please let me finish. Yes. All right. So if you want to do other hearings, we're doing more hearings. But today we're here to hear from these people. So do you have a question for these witnesses? No, today? I have some concerns, right. well, many we, concerns, and I well, want to just I'm share with you... you out of order. What right. the concerns I'm out of order. Do are? You have a point of order. I'm sorry. Do you have a point of order? Yes. What is your point of order? Point of order is to have them under oath. You're out of order. As I've said, this is something that is not done here in this state. Um, it's really only. Uh, it may know, not be not done under court. the state, this but you're allowing people to come in here and lie, and I know they're lying. Representative, uh, you're out of order. I've given, I've indulged you, but you're out of order, and we're going to move on. And on behalf of my witnesses, I would like to point out that every single witness we've presented here has sworn an affidavit as to all of these facts. And so, Representative, please, uh, I gave you some room there, but we're going to move on.